Welcome, everybody, to another interview as we cheers to 10 years of 17 Hats. I'm your host, Amanda Ray, and I am joined today by 17 Hats Ambassador and 17 Hats member, Luke Beasley. Luke, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. We are going to dive in to 10 years, right? We're going to try to bring you some wisdom of what it takes to be 10 years in business to kind of, um, you know, go against the odds, go past the stats of burnout one, three, five in 10 years and talk about what it takes to make a successful business and a business that kind of withstands the test of time. So Luke, thanks for letting us kind of dive into this journey and giving us an insight into the last 10 years of your business. Let's get started by just telling us who you are, where you're from, what you do, and when you started your business. Okay. Uh, so my name's Luke, and then uh, my wife and I are a husband and wife wedding photography team and also commercial mm -hmm. photo video team. Uh, we've been doing photography for 14 years and uh, been with 17 Hats for 10. This December will be 10 years. Um, and currently we're sitting in Florida because we have been down here doing a podcast filming for a commercial client. Yeah. So, so it's kind of funny that we're jumping on this, doing this. So yeah. we travel around, we do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Um, love it. And we're just thankful that we get to do this full time. Um, we went full time in our business back in September of 2018. Um, and so we, we just took a leap and, and had fun with it and it's, uh, it's been amazing. I, I don't think I can go back to working for somebody after taking that leap. No, um, it's so hard. It's, I, to be an entrepreneur, you have your you have your mountaintops and your valleys. Um, sometimes it seems like we're in the valleys more than we are on the mountaintops. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's something that I don't think any entrepreneur would ever change um, to be able to work for themselves, yeah. do their own thing and stuff like that. So I'm just thankful yeah. to have that opportunity and to be able to have, you know, a great platform to be able to manage that for us. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so just... That's a little bit of us. I always say that the entrepreneurial journey is a mountainous journey. You have the highest highs and the lowest lows, but you know, it's worth it. If you can yeah. get through it, it's absolutely worth it. So talk to me about your business. You know, what made you guys start your business? How did you find, cause you were obviously in business for a while before you found 17 hats. Yeah, we, um, we got into, we got into, well, it's a long story. So I'll, I always ask when people ask, like, you know, what, yeah, yeah, what got you into photography? I'm always asking them, do you want the truth or the lie? Um, and so <laughs> I'll save it and make it really condensed. The only reason why we even got into photography business was because we were broke and we realized people would pay money wow. for pictures. Um, and so that's what got us into doing business. We had a business prior to this and it felt horribly. Um, and so when we first got going, um, you know, we were, I think the first two or three years, we're just trying to figure things out. Um, mm -hmm. And then we ended up getting wiser at what we were doing and trying to sustain ourselves and be a better business. So then, you know, finding great platforms and um, uh, building that foundation to allow us to get to where we are now. That's amazing. When you like, I mean, okay, I'm trying to process all this because you said, okay, you're broke. You got to go into business. You got to figure that out. You went into photography 10 years later, right? Or f I guess longer for you. Yeah. Looking back, what would you have told yourself back then? About anything or about, just... just about business? Like, what would you have said? Oh, hey, wow. do this better. Do this first. Do like, what advice would you have given yourself? Um, be okay with failing and knowing that oh, the that. failure is going to, um, to build you know, you're gonna be able to build on that and uh, get better at it. It's okay to make yeah. mistakes, um, doing things unconventionally um, than others yep. and, and yep. saying, you know what, we can, we're on the same, we're going in the same direction. There's a path that we want to take. Um, it may be different than someone else's path and not get caught up yeah. in comparison. I think that would be the biggest thing. Like it's okay to fail and uh, don't compare. Cause once you start comparing and you get in that trap, you're done. Like you're it done. will take a minute to get out of there. So I had a saying to myself when I was a photographer, um, when everybody goes left, go right. So it, it first came up to me, I was out scouting locations one day and I saw all these photographers basically shooting all in the same location. Sure. And I was like, okay, I don't want to shoot there, right? If everybody's shooting there, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Let me look behind them 
And I saw behind them was this beautiful, I'm like, why are they not shooting there? That's much better light. That's much better, you know, like mm -hmm. that's much better everything. And then that's really when I started that, that mantra kind of hit and kind of stuck with me. I just don't, don't be afraid to go against the grain. Yeah. Don't be afraid to do something different, carve your own path, carve your own way. Um, I love that you said that because it made me think about that. I haven't thought about that in such a long time. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you just got to do it your way to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We're all trying to get to a finish line and some of us are going to get to start off the race yeah. differently. You know, uh, I use this analogy. Um, I used it probably a couple of years ago. We were doing a podcast for ourselves and uh, mm -hmm. on comparison. And if we all start the race at the same point, you know, it's like the old school video games. Like we all end up with like a, a prize or a tool to yeah. get us over this mountain. Right. So some of us end up with a jet pack. Some of us end up with a rope, you know, yeah. some of us have a donkey. Some of us just have a car. Yeah. We all have to get over the mountain of success or that business, whatever it is that we're doing. Yeah. Um, some of us with that jet pack can just shoot up and go over the mountain and they get to the other side faster than anybody else. And we're looking at them going, how do, can they do that? How do they do that? Why am I not that person? And we're here with the rope trying to just like <laughs> climb up this mountain. But uh, you know, I had told my wife when we were talking about this, I was like, we are the ones with the rope that have learned the hard lessons and have built this amazing business and foundation first. So when yeah. we get to that other side, we already have things figured out. The person with the jetpack who took over and jumped over the mountain, they haven't figured out all this hard stuff. They had the yeah. easy way. And then when the hard stuff comes, they're kind of like backwards in a sense. They're going to collapse. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we fill that with 17 hats too. Cause I mean, we've had our, we've had our goods and our bads and our ups mm -hmm. and our downs and we, we've had to fare our, you know, fair share of storms. Right. But it's actually made us so much more stable. It's made yeah. us so much stronger. It's made us to be able to really weather whatever storm that comes at us. Yeah. Um, which I think that's just true for any business, um, kind of taking the, the, the harder journey, mm -hmm. getting hit with more storms, you just learn more. I love to focus or not really focus, but I, I love to talk a little bit about business maturity Yeah, because I, I do feel like this journey plays into that. And I can always tell within the first five minutes of talking to somebody, I can tell their business maturity, right? Like how many storms they have weathered um, and how much actually knowledge and experience they have underneath their belt. Um, talk to me about those phases of business maturity with you and how um, y'all's business kind of matured over time and maybe some of those um, points that helped your business kind of mature. Oh, goodness. Um, that's where I, I need my wife to step in. She, she's currently <laughs> sitting on the bed in the hotel where we are listening. I'm like, hey, come. Come, um, join me. Come join us. Um, man, maturity. I, I think... You know, for us, it was funny when we when we were starting in our business, we we had three kids like our, our very third our, our last kid, our third kid was, you know, um, was just born. Ash would go around and do photo shoots with him on her in a little carrier, oh you know, gosh. she was holding him. So I think at the same time we were maturing as parents and trying to figure out this journey, you know, with a, yeah. a four year old and a two year old, two girls running around and stuff. We were also trying to um, mature as business owners, like how do we interact yeah. with clients? You know, how do we maintain and create this client experience yeah. um, while we're still trying to figure out how to get good at photography um, and and all those things. And then just just that balance of life. And then we were, you know, like I said, we were super broke at the, those early stages. But as we begin to get out of debt and do that, the kids grew up, our business started expanding. We went full time. I think the client experience, all those things, those foundations, again, that we laid really helped us mature into those next levels. We were able to start charging more. We were able to start yeah. uh, doing the things that we really wanted to do and be at the place where we wanted to be at that we saw others at. Um, sure. We were finally there. It just took a little longer. Um, yeah. And so I think I think that was the biggest thing. I, and again, I mean, and, and of course, we're going to talk about 17 Hats, of course. Yeah. I think that was a big tool that helped us mature because. Yeah, let's you, dive into that. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, sure. let's go for it. Yeah, we run three brands through through 17 hats. So we have three photo businesses that we run through it. And we tell people all the time, if your back end client experience is horrible, like you got paying clients that don't know that are having a bad, you know, they don't know how to pay their bill. They don't have a way to pay the bill. They can't see yeah. questionnaires. They don't have a portal. All these different things that 17 hats has to offer, then you're, you're confusing your clients or making them frustrated because they don't have a way to just make that part of their weddings because we do a lot of weddings simplified yeah. you know it's one less stress thing that they have to deal with like 
what's my bill or what are the questionnaires yes. or what are the things that the photographers need for me? And 17 Hats really provides that smooth platform for that. It's, it's fabulous. Like we love it. We've, we've never been sidetracked by other um, CRMs, like a new ones come out, mm -hmm. like HoneyBook came out a couple of years sure. ago and we're like, no, like mm -hmm. we're not going to go through this whole process of moving clients. We already have a fantastic, you know, workflow through this thing. Yeah. So why even put our clients through that um, sure. and, and stuff like that? So, so we do our weddings, our personal weddings. We have a whole another uh, wedding company called Virginia Wedding Company. We have about 36 photographers that shoot for us there. Wow. And then we do our commercial stuff there. So we're dealing with a lot of clients that we have to make sure everyone, their touch points on the CRM side are like all lined up. Everything's good to go. That's amazing. I mean, when you say you went from broke to having three brands to what did you say? 36 photographers shooting? It's our retirement one? thing. Yeah. Like how do we retire at a wedding? Photography? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, that's a, in a, like a 10, 14 year spans, 15 yeah. year spans. Right. I mean, how did you get yourself moving on that path? I mean, that's some success, right? Um, how did you like, you know, some people will just come in and be like, okay, making 20 grand a year, 30 grand a year, 50 grand a year, 60 grand a year, that that's enough. Or people like really have a hard time with it. How do you just keep leveling up time after time after time? Um, we have bills to pay. No, <laughs> <laughs> it is a need and a necessity and we figure it out. Right. No, there's just this, there's a internal desire to, to be better. Um, and not in a, um, a bad way where we're like obsessive in a right. sense, but like there's, we, we can settle and be content or we can say, Hey, can we build more and, and, you know, give something to our kids? Is there a way that yeah. we can transfer that down? Um, is there, uh, yeah, I, I think that, that was it just, just continuously trying to chase something that, um, we're good at. We've gotten good at photography. So how can we continue to grow that and build that? Mm -hmm. And we've settled probably like five, six years ago that we're like, Hey, we're not going to look at another career option. Let's just dig into photography and let's just make it happen for the next 20, 25 years, whatever that case is. And how can we begin to start shooting less weddings, be more on the luxury side, higher inside, but then how do we retire? You know, um, yeah. those are the things that we're looking at, you know, how do we build up a team? How can we keep pouring knowledge into them? But we also really like commercial photography, yeah. and videography. So let's go chase those clients and go have fun with that. So it's just, it's just all of that. And then eventually one day we'll sit back and be like, Awesome. We had a great time and it was amazing. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, you constantly have to keep pushing yourself, growing and moving and grooving and pushing yourself to the next level or you're never going to get there. I really believe that a business grows as you grow. So as your business knowledge grows, as you grow as a business owner, your business grows right alongside of you. How have you changed as a business owner from 10 plus years ago to now? I have a nice office with a big plush <laughs> chair and I just kick back all day. <laughs> um, all day, nonstop. I sit by the pool and do nothing. Right. Um, I think as uh, I, I think when I went full time, that was a really great opportunity or it was the only opportunity was to really dig into the business and really dig into your own personal self, uh, get better at what we do, find new ways to be innovative, um, not settle. And it just pushes you as a person to say, hey, I've got to develop personally to become a better person and that's going to yeah. pour into the businesses and that's going to get us where we want. Um, and then it just helps us with, you know, relationship building. I mean, there's, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I would say, can you, can, I love that you brought up relationship building. Can you like nail down some pivotal points that really did help you grow or really did help you push to the next level? Is there anything there? I think I, the biggest one I think that we always kind of go back to was just getting out of debt. When we started the business, we were 86 grand in debt. We even tried to file for wow. bankruptcy at the time and we, we were so broke, our check bounced. Um, wow. So those were like the, the pivotal moments. And then from there, I think it's just the success that happens. You know, we were driven to get out of debt. Then we were able to buy a, a, a nice home. And then, you know, our kids are now teenagers. Our oldest is 17. And so it's like just just you know, finally back on track where we wish we can be at or where we're at now. And then 
Listen yeah, it's 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 the you know you got to keep going, you got to keep pushing, you got to yeah. keep moving, right? Just yeah. let, like no rest, rest for the weary, almost. I want to talk a little bit about the business hat versus like what I call the passion hat. So the passion hat for you would be being a photographer, right? Doing the creative, um, doing the creative portion of it, versus the business hat is all the business stuff to get your business to grow. I feel like so many people wear the passion hat a lot. I want to be a better photographer. I want to be a better balloon artist. I want to be a better DJ. I want to be a, you know, I want to be the best whatever in the United States, but they don't ever put on the business hat and they never think about client experience or pricing or marketing or process systems, automations, that jazz. How do you balance the two or is it like husband, wife team? Do you guys keep each other balanced? Yeah, that's that's a great. Um, when we first started, there was this constant uh, battle between Ash and I, and like who's going to do what, like who yeah. responds to the lead, who's going to call, or um, who's the lead shooter. This guy. Um, <laughs> no, who who is doing the editing? Who's doing that? And when I had a full time job, there was a lot of times where you know we would go do a session or a wedding, and then I have to go to work, and then Ash would be at home editing. And then I'll come home and help. And then she's like, oh, I changed this about editing. And I'm like, okay, what'd you do? And then we had to learn the different styles. And over over about five years, we finally realized there had to be roles that we both played. Like yeah. your job is this, my job is this. We don't, we know what each other's jobs are, but we don't really mingle or cross into it unless we really yeah. have to. And so I think that's what helped build the the creative side and then the, the whole business hat side. It's like one of us was able to focus on the business side, automations, logistics, you know, the, I like that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, Ash has developed into a fantastic second shooter. I mean, a lead shooter. Um, <laughs> and, She's going to murder you when you get off of this. Um, and so <laughs> we've, we've worked together as a great team. And we're fortunate just because we're a husband and wife team. And I understand like, you know, with single shooters and stuff like that is definitely hard. Um, Again, when we got into photography, there was no, we didn't wake up with the camera in our hands. That's our bio never read, you know, I had a camera at the age of two. Sure. You know, yeah. 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 It was at a necessity, but the passion developed after we started doing it. We realized, oh, this is really fun. You know, we can really take some cool pictures with this. We can serve some really great people. And I think that's still going with us and we're still yeah. discovering that passion and still growing on that. Um, but again, um, our Luke and Ashley brand on 17 hats has been automated now for almost six years. Like we do our things. We've already developed our workflows, our emails, like everything is there. So when we get those yeah. new clients in, it's a matter of just clicking on the button, send the email. Um, we check this little box, all this stuff happens yeah. and then we can just let it be at rest. And we've, you know, developed those systems using 17 hats. So. That's amazing. Um, talk to me a little bit more about automation because automation is scary for some people. Process, client experience, it all goes together, right? Um, now that everything's automated, looking back on that process, how did you start that process and how did you go about that process to getting to full automation? I was tired of sending out the same emails, you know, the same exact similar emails every day or if not okay. like three or four times, you know, a week. And so mm -hmm. it's like, how can we automate these things so we're not wasting time doing the same exact thing over and over and over again? Yeah. So email templates, um, obviously 17 hats with that, um, you know, uh, the contracts and educating our brides, educating our clients, just those are the automations that really like allowed us to say, okay, we're not swamped. We're not stuck in this right here. We can unplug from that in a sense and just get creative and come up with new things and stay innovative in our shooting. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all of 17 hats, what's your favorite feature? I don't ask this question a lot, but I'm going to ask it to you. What's your favorite feature in 17 hats? Do you have one? Um, I love, I think, um, oh, that's a great question. There's a few. Um, <laughs> I think my most favorite one is definitely the workflow side of things. Like okay. knowing that we've created a, a workflow. Like, so anytime a, a bride books with us, um, we do a pre-wedding workflow. So it's about like 35, 40 steps. And it's, it's all dependent upon when their wedding base date is. And then we kind of back from there. And then we have things, emails that go out, certain um, comments that go out or like, hey, you know, go to your client portal. Here's some questionnaires. Questionnaires go out for certain things. Um, so all of those are like kind of taken care of. Once we hit that that workflow, it's like, boom, welcome to the Luke and Ashley family. Here's your portal information. Here's your questionnaires for bride and groom getting to know you type of thing. And then a couple months or weeks later, however it's set up, you know, the next email goes out. So we know that the brides are being taken care of in that whole entire process. Yeah. They've invested thousands of dollars. So 
treat them as they've done that and, and create that process. And, um, yeah, that's, I think that's probably one of my favorites. That's really cool. I mean, to have it all set up for it to just go and just kind of watch it go. And you're like, Ooh, I created that. Yeah. Right. There is a yep. sense of just relief and excitement and uh, all the feelings that come in, especially when it starts making money for you. Sure. Right. And it starts doing the work for you. Um, a few last questions for you. Husband, wife team. I love that you guys found your boundaries. What other advice can you give to other members that have a husband wife team. It's hard. I, I mean, I worked with my husband with 17 ads. He's the one that started 17 ads and I came into it in 2017. I mean, our staff knows we had what we would call passionate conversations, right? Yeah. This isn't fighting. It's just very passionate dialogue um, because it, it can get a lot. It can yeah. get hard. Um, what advice do you have? Um, we've learned to smile angry um, at, on wedding day. <laughs> I love why, that. Why we're arguing passionately um, to <laughs> smile while we're saying the the frustrating <laughs> thing that we're talking about. Um, let's see. What's that? Oh, yeah. So our thanks, Ash. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> our our mantra, I guess, are our three big things that we've uh, we've kind of talked about how and what makes us a great husband and wife team has always been communicate, compromise in a shared vision. Like when we were going through the thick of it, if we would go drive around at homes and like, man, you know, I wish we can live in a house like this. And we would start daydreaming and planning about those things. Or man, once we get out of debt or once we do this or as a business, we want to do this. So having that shared vision of where we are going to go and what we can do um, and then just always communicating about that. But then also knowing that sometimes we have to compromise on, you know, the things that we may want to do until that time. Yeah. Comes, so. I love that. I love that you you have that like down so well too. We're out, so. <laughs> For anybody starting a business, so people yeah. like obviously you've been doing this. You've been doing this a long time. You have figured some stuff out. It might not all be figured out. This is a journey, sure. but you have definitely figured out how to get here. For anybody in that first year or two years of business, what advice would you give them so that they can also be here ten years later? Just really invest and look into how to create a very stable business foundation. Like, honestly, like um, we've talked about this with other people before, like you can start a business and you can start, you know, saying, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go as photographers, go off and shoot a whole bunch of pictures yeah. and do all these things. But if you don't invest in the right hard drive for your data and your images and something crashes where well, you just lost business, you've yeah. got bad word of mouth in a sense, customers will be like, oh, they lost my images. So you should have, they should have invested in a great, you know, system for that invest in those systems that are going to, that you can start those building blocks on and start doing that. So Absolutely. 17 hats, a CRM is one of those things. Um, definitely, you know, the hard drive. So obviously just, mm -hmm. just those things that they, they know that they can build that strong business and, and ask other photographers or other industry people, whatever industry that they're in, like, what can I do to not make the same mistakes or what can I do to shortcut yeah. some of those things, but still be very successful um, in that. I love that. That's such great advice. Luke, if people want to learn more about you and Ashley's business, where can they find you? Um, the easiest place to go is uh, wearelukeandashley.com. Um, that will umbrella everyone or whoever goes to the, the three main things that we do um, or uh, at Luke and Ashley Photography on Instagram. All right. You heard it. That's where you can go find them. Luke, thank you so much for joining us. Ashley, thanks for the comments from the bed. We appreciate that as well. Um, thanks for sharing insight into your business journey and y'all's business success over the last de decade. We appreciate you being members, ambassadors. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having us, Amanda. We look forward to it. We're so thankful for 17 Hats, um, the community. This is our second year's ambassadors, and I just love jumping in and listening and hearing all the things. So just proud to be a part of the, the family and just pushing this thing forward. Thanks so much. And everybody listening, thank you for joining in. And until next time, cheers, guys.